Hello, this is Bashar. In this tutorial, we will be implementing the audit functionality of Spring Data JPA. First, let's see how it is working. So in the application, we have this endpoint of these articles and I'm sending an article, sending a post request with this user one. And in the article entity, we have these fields other than the content, we have the created by, created at, modified by, and modified at fields. And these are filled with the current logged in user. And we have another endpoint for updating this entity. So the entity ID is this one, one, and I'm sending a put request to this endpoint. And this time I'm sending my request with the user two, and this is the content and here the article is updated, the content is updated with the data I'm sending here. And also these fields, the modified by and modified add fields are updated with the current logged in user and the corresponding time. So we will be implementing this and we will use Spring Data Auditing functionality. As usual, I have the repository right here. You can just clone the project from here. And currently we have two branches. The main one is the initial project. I'm going to start from this part. And the final one is the final code that we are going to implement during this tutorial. I already cloned this repository and currently it is opened in Visual Studio Code. And here we can see I'm on the main branch. And let's check the project. Here I'm running Spring version, Spring Boot version 2.4 running Java version 11. I have the Spring Data JPA, security and web dependencies, and the others are for the development. And we have embedded uh, in memory H2 and the test dependencies. And let's check the source folder. We have this main class. And other than that, we have this article package and the configuration package. In the configuration, this is an, a simple configuration for basic authentication and currently uh, defined these endpoints, these articles, uh, post and put endpoints to be authenticated. Others are going to be uh, non-authenticated. So you can check my Spring Security tutorial to see what is the configuration is about, what is this part about. and. Um, in this one, we don't have a user in database, but we have user in memory and I am defining them here. So I'm saying that the authentication will be in memory authentication and we have these users, user one and user two. And I'm using this bcrypt password encoder because I have to use a password encoder for the authentication configuration. So that's why I'm going with the bcrypt and I'm encrypting the passwords for these users and giving them the role as this user. I'm not going to use the roles, but we have to set the roles for the users uh, to make this application work. And in the article entity, this is just a simple entity. We have this ID and this content, and we have the controller in this controller. We have this post mapping, get mapping and the put mapping. And we have this article DTO. This is just the representation of our um, request body. Uh, we are not going to post all the fields in the entity of the article. So we will be, we will be just posting this content. And here in the, uh, the controller methods, we are taking that DTO object and we are creating the article based on that and saving it to database through the article repository and doing the same thing for the put mapping and get and we are just checking the id and getting the article in db and updating its content uh, by the way i don't have the service class because i wanted to keep this code simple we don't have too much business logic so that's why i didn't uh, separate those part that part from the controller. And in the repository, we have uh, nothing here. It, we are using its default uh, methods. 
Now let's start the implementation. First, let's start with the, the manual way. So how this audit functionality is working, let's practice that first. So in the article, we will have the fields of, uh, let's say this is going to be a string of the uh, created by, so this is representation of the user who created this article. And we will be tracking the, the date of the create creation and let's say this is local date time and the variable name is created created date so now we have these fields and let's fill these fields manually right here again in my previous tutorials i've shown how we can get the logged in user and here uh, I'm going to get through the security context holder and we will get the authentication and we will get the username. Let's have it like this logged in username. So we can set article set created by logged in username. So currently logged in user is posting this article. Therefore, I can use that name in this article uh, for this field. And for the date part, set create a date. This is just a local date time now. So let's save all these changes and let's run the application. Application is running, opening the postman once again. I'm going to post a request to these articles. So sending it. And here we have this ID content created by and created date fields are filled with the correct user. If I change this to user two and post another article right here. Here, this is created by user two and this is the article too. So we add this created by and date fields to our entity. Now let's do the modified part. Again, we will add new fields just like these, just copying and pasting here. Instead of created, this is going to be modified by and modified date. And similarly, here in the article controller, we will repeat the same steps, just copying this part from the post mapping and pasting right here. So we are getting the user again. And this time we are going to update the entity we queried from the database, so in DB. And we will set the field of modified by and modified date. Again, saving all these changes. Going back to postman. Let's send a request with user one. So we have this entity. This is the first create request post request. By the way, the, the database is working in memory mode. So in each code change in this project, it is restarting the application. Therefore, we are having empty database in each uh, start. So this is the first entity in table. And the ID is this one. And we have the created by and created date fields. And if I go to the update part, updating this entity, and again, sending my request with the user two. Let's see what's going to happen. And here we can see this modified by and modified date fields are filled with the data we are setting in put mapping. So we implemented this functionality manually. We can delegate this functionality to Spring Data JPA. So in saving a new entity or updating an existing entity, we are calling this article repository save method. But the JPA is aware that if this is the first insertion 
or it is an update request. So we can use this awareness of this JPA and we can ask to insert the fields for this created by, this created date and modified by and modified date parts. Let's start with the date parts. For that, we will use an annotation of JPA and this annotation is created date. And similarly, we will use another annotation for the modified date and that is last modified date annotation. Now to trigger the JPA to fill these fields, we will use another annotation in this class definition and that is entity listeners. And this entity is listening auditing entity listener class. And finally, we will enable this auditing in any of our configuration class. We can do it right here in our main class. We can add another annotation to here, which is enable JPA auditing. So with this way, we are asking JPA to care about these created date and last modified date annotated fields. And basically it is going to be checking if the entity is inserted for the first time or it is updated. And based on that, it is going to be setting these fields. Now let's try that, saving all these changes. Now we don't need to set the fields right here. We don't need to set the created date or modified date. So these are not needed anymore. Let's save this and let's try it. And let's send a post request with this user one and with this article content, sending it. And here we can see this create date and modified date fields are filled. So these values are also same. So uh, the Spring Data JPA auditing is filling these fields. Uh, the, the modified date part is also automatically filled even the entity is inserted for the first time. Now let's do the same thing for the this created by and modified by parts. Again, we will use annotations and these annotations are created by and modified, last modified by. Now let's update this article controller. We no longer need to set the created by and we don't need this logged in user information and let's comment out these parts in the update uh, method too. Again, saving all these changes. Now let's post another article. Now we are seeing this created by is null. So basically these annotations are not enough to make this auditing to work. Because Spring Data JPA does not know how to get the logged in username. For that, we need to have an, a custom implementation for an interface. And let's add it right here. Let's call this one as Auditor Aware Implementation. And this is going to be implementing auditor aware and this is a generic interface we will be returning a username and that's going to be a string so let's make sure the type is string and let's implement the the method now instead of pulling the user right here in the controller let's get this part just copying it and pasting it here so we can get the logged in username here and this is asking for an optional so we will return 
optional off this logged in username and we want this auditor aware implementation to be part of our actual application currently this is just a class spring doesn't know anything about it so let's make sure spring uses this one so we use component notation right here so saving this one and let's post another article and here we can see created by is filled with user one and also the created date is filled and currently this is the first insertion therefore the modified by and modified date fields are having the same value but if we go here and update this one with user 2 here we can see the modified by and modified dates are updated so that's how we can use the auditing functionality coming with the JPA uh, we can extend this functionality currently we are adding these fields as a part of this article entity but we can create an abstract entity and have, we can put these fields to it uh, then in this article we can extend that class so we would be extracting this part to a separate class and we can use it for the other entities too so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next tutorials